Hi, I'm Rick Dancer. The Army Corps of Engineers recently discovered the potential for a problem with its system of dams in the Willamette Valley. Some of the parts on the spillway gates are wearing out and need to be replaced or upgraded. Until that work is complete, less water will be kept behind the dams, which slightly elevates the risk of flooding in the Willamette Valley. But before we talk more about the problem, let's look at the mission of the Army Corps of Engineers. This massive Willamette River system weaves its way in and around much of the valley from the foothills of the Cascades to the streams and rivers running off the coast range. In a typical Oregon winter, a lot of water makes its way down the west side of the Cascades from Cottage Grove, through Eugene Springfield, up past Corvallis, and through Portland, and finally emptying into the Columbia River. Some of these dams, like Lookout Point east of Eugene, produce electricity. Lookout Point could generate enough electricity to power the cities of Eugene and Springfield. Hydropower generation is not the main purpose of those dams. They were built for flood risk management. Historically, the Willamette Valley flooded. It was a very flood prone area, you know, with the Cascades and the Coast Range and lots of rain in the wintertime. In the 1930s, Congress stepped in with a mandate and money to help manage the Willamette River system from Cottage Grove to Portland reducing the risk of flooding up and down the valley, and it works. The first dam began construction in, uh, in the 30s and was completed by 1941. That was Fern Ridge Dam. Beyond that, uh, over the next 30 years, the remaining 12 dams that are part of the system were developed and put online. Put online to help reduce the risk of flooding. Former State Senator Bob Kintai remembers back in 1947. The relocation of the railroad started back almost to Jasper. You got to leave Jasper after you got out of Jasper, there's a place where you go. Kintai, a forester, helped determine the value of the timberland for the Army Corps of Engineers before the dams could be built. I was a new boy in town. I just got, I just come to work here in October of 47. He remembers the flooding and the problems caused by high water before the dams were built. The water went across over Colberg Road, just north of uh, the uh, bridge. The water used to get so high the McKinsey and Willamette confluence moved from its current location. They cut cross country, I was told, and came together somewhere in the Willakinsey area. Let's show you the Corps' 13 Willamette Valley dams. To the south, Cottage Grove and Dorena dams. East and a little south of Eugene are Hills Creek, Lookout Point, Dexter, and Fall Creek dams. Up along the McKinsey River are Cougar and Blue River dams. Fern Ridge Dam is west of Eugene. Green Peter and Foster dams are on the South Santa Am River near Sweet Home, and Detroit and Big Cliff dams are on the North Santa Am River. Now, let's look at how the system works. The dark blue is the water that, in part, is controlled by these dams. In fact, the Corps works to manage about 77% of the water flowing into the system in the Eugene Springfield area. Here's where it gets tricky, though. See the light blue water on the map? Those are uncontrolled rivers and streams that also empty into the Willamette River Basin. There is no way to manage that water. It is a carefully monitored system operators releasing water from the dams in the southern part of the valley must take into account all the uncontrolled water flowing into the system to the north. By the time that water gets to Albany, only about 43% is manageable. In Salem, that drops to 41%. And by the time that water arrives in Portland, only about 27% of the water coming into the system can actually be managed. Yeah, the number one purpose is, is flood control. Now, we don't call it flood control anymore. We call it flood risk management because we can't control flooding. So what is this potential problem? What is causing all the headlines, conversations, and concern with this river system this year and in years to come? We had a climbing inspection in 2008, and structural engineers at that time saw some deformation in the main structural beams of the spillway gates at Foster Dam. This is a spillway gate. Not all the dams in the system have them, but 38 of the 42 gates need to be repaired. Inspectors found bending beams, worn out parts, a system designed for earlier times, now in dire need of an update, an overhaul. Because we found that problem, we accelerated our climbing inspections of other facilities around the Willamette Valley. 
Inspections turned up similar problems at other dams. We found some problems at Dexter Dam. We found in a number of places that uh, conditions of our facilities were deteriorating due to age and due to, to being used in ways that really um, the facility was not necessarily designed or intended to be used. Demands on the spillway gates grow as water is released for fisheries and wildlife recreation, water quality, and supply. That's big. We've got millions of people living downstream, lots of development downstream. And what we're trying to do is diminish the risk of flooding. To reduce this risk, to protect lives and property, the system needs to work properly. And it's a system that protects the economy. Springfield, Eugene, Albany, Salem, um, the agricultural development uh, across the valley would not be what it is today but for the dams that represent the Willamette system. It's estimated that $20 billion in flood damages have been prevented in the Willamette Valley since completion of this system of dams. While the Army Corps of Engineers works to protect this system and rebuild the spillway gates, less water will be held behind those gates. So you see that horizontal cross member? Water is usually just a little above that, five feet above that or so. What we've done is we've lowered on a number of our reservoirs, lowered that level down so we have less pressure on the gate we can take some stress off the gate and alleviate pressure on those uh, main structural members. Because most people are not going to notice a difference downstream. In an extraordinary event, uh, multiple big storms in sequence, in close sequence, that's where we might have a problem. So what exactly is a spillway gate and how often are they used? And what's being done to fix the problem in the system? That's coming up in our next story. Also, how do you know if you live in a floodplain? What are your risks? What can you do? That's coming up as well.